Yes, sir, mister. You can always tell a first-rate town by the way the people treat a stranger. Now, you know we're first class around here because this is genuine bay rum I'm throwing in, absolutely free. I appreciate that word free, sir, because I'm down to my last dollar. Well, you got a nice way about you, mister. But if you want to make money around this town, your strong back will help you more than your good manners. Oh? The mines, they're running full blast around here, paying top dollar, too. The cattlemen, on the other hand, are suffering. What's good for one is bad for the other. My Ben Cartwright's been coming to town the past two days, trying to get men for the roundup. But they're all taking jobs in the mines. Guess you can't blame a man when you stack up the difference in wages. Ben sure is persistent, though. Which one is little Joe? The one on the Pinto. Hey, how come you knew his name? I thought you said he was a stranger around here. Oh, everybody's heard about the Ponderosa, the Cartwrights. You heading for the mines? I always go where the real money is. Are you sure you want to sign on? Well, I'll tell you how it is, Mr. Ben. If I go to the mines, they're going to pay me too much money. Too much money? Well, what can a man do with money but spend it on Saturday nights for whiskey and women? Now, at my age, too much of both <laughs> ain't good for me. Now, with what you pay me, I can stay healthy. <laughs> you got yourself a job, Harry. An explanation like that deserves beer, Harry. <laughs> Come on, Harry. <laughs> Here you need hands. That's right. Well, I'm looking for a job. Uh, we're looking for cow hands. I know. You don't mind me asking, have you ever pushed cattle before? Yeah, I've done it before, and, and like I say, I'm, I need a job. Well, if it's money you're needing, why haven't you tried the mines? You see, a man should only go below ground once when they plant them there in a pine box. Me, I, I like fresh air. Well, that sounds fair enough, Pa. Uh, where have you worked before, Mr. Uh, Stafford, Clay Stafford. Uh, you worked any ranches before? Uh, the Circle J and Lazy Bar up in Oregon Territory. Lazy Bar is one of the biggest ranches up there. Ever worked around here? Oh, no, no local references, if that's what you mean. He's healthy and he needs a job, Pa. What more do you want? Uh, wages are $8 a week. Payday every Friday and a bonus at the end of the job. Sounds fair. All right. Clay Stafford. Right. Very good. We'll be leaving in about an hour. Doesn't look like anybody else is in the lineup yet. I'll get some supplies. Right. Hey, thanks for putting in a good word with your father. Wouldn't have made any difference. You'd have gotten the job anyway. We need hands. Hey, where are you from, Stafford? Call me Clay. I'm from a lot of places. Now, a man only gets born in one. Well, that'd be New Orleans. Hey, no kidding. New Orleans? My mother was born there. That's a coincidence. Yeah, that, that sure is. Luxury here. Solid floor in the bunkhouse, springs in the beds, not even any busted window panes. You ain't been doing much riding lately, huh? 
How do you mean? Well, hardly any calluses on your hands. Wear gloves. Well, I'll be work plenty starting tomorrow. I think I'll go in and try out them springs right now. Pretty fancy holster you got there. Yeah, it's a McKendrick special. <laughs> it's like the left front end of it all. Well, you see, you don't draw the gun slips out. Oh, yeah. You'd be ready to fire that in a wink, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's, it's fast. Uh, won't be needing anything that fast around here. Yeah, but this is good, Mr. Ben. Well, that's not good. Well, I tell you, it's a day's work that last a week. Been so saddle sore since I was young. Well, I'm ready, Mr. Cartwright. All right. See you. Yeah. Where's he going? Back to the ranch. I'm gonna help little Joe bring out the supplies. How'd you talk him into that? After the day's work he put in. I didn't. He volunteered. Beaver for work, ain't he? Yeah, we could use a couple more like him. Clay, what are you doing back here? Thought I'd give you a hand with supplies. Hey, thanks, I can use a hand as soon as I finish the coffee. There's some place you got here. Yeah, it sure is. My pa built this place with his bare hands. I was born in that little room upstairs. Thought you said you were from New Orleans. No, no, that's where my pa married my mother. They were married there, and then they came back here to settle down. You uh, remember your mother? No, not too much. Just what my pa told me about her. <laughs> I always said she was like... Like having spring in the house the year round. Always laughing, full of fun and warmth. Guess she must have looked pretty nice, huh? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I guess she was about the prettiest woman in New Orleans. Hey, I've got a, got a picture of her right here. I always carry it with me. What do you think? Like having spring in the house all the year round? Prettiest picture I've ever seen. Sure wish this was mine. What? Oh, uh, it was a silly thing for me to say. I, I was just thinking how I how I never knew my mother. Kind of wish she looked like this. Hey, we better head out if we're gonna get back to camp before sundown, huh? I guess we better. Those supplies won't take care of themselves.
Uh, Mr. Ben, would you be good enough to see your way clear to, to give me a $2 advance on my next week's pay? Well, Harry, it's, uh, it's barely 11 o'clock. Have you run through your $8 already? Well, well it, it's this way, Mr. Ben. Now, they, these, these miners around here, they're drinking more whiskey and giving more to the girls. So I got to raise my sights to meet the competition. <coughs> well, Harry, what about uh, what about your health that you're so worried about? It's Saturday night. I'll worry about my health Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Lucky night, huh? Yeah, it sure is. You just come into town? Yeah, the first of the week. Where well, you been keeping yourself? Herding cattle? You're a cowpoke, huh? Yeah, that's right. I deal with it. Hey, Mouth. We're wasting a lot of time on this little glass, can't you? Give me something a little bigger. Yeah. Full house. Four trays. You say you're a cow hand. Yeah, that's right. I've been working the Ponderosa. You say you're a cheat. We work in the mines hard for our money. But being under the ground don't hurt my eyes none. Looks to me like you low carded. I see it's my lucky night. And I say we want our money back. Every man to his own opinion. Time you get miners and cattlemen together, they just itching for something to happen. And this thing was just about what they were waiting for. Joseph, the sheriff's right. Best the boy leave town. Pa, it is not right and it's not fair. Now, we all know he shot in self-defense. Maybe so. But do you know whether or not he low-carded? Roy, a man is innocent until proven guilty. A stranger, a fast gun, and a card sharp all wrapped up in one package? Now, that's something Virginia City don't oh, need. Oh, wait a minute, Roy. Wait a minute. What do you mean, a stranger? Everybody's a stranger until they settle someplace. And as for being a fast gun, if he wasn't, he'd be dead instead of the miner. So don't use that. All right, I'll grant you that. But you ain't answering the main point. Was he cheating or wasn't? But the point is there is no proof the man was cheating. That is not the point. Little Joe, when I first took this job, and that was a few years ago, I made an arrangement of myself. I said, Roy, the best way to handle trouble is to avoid it. And it's worked out pretty well. Now, if this fellow Stafford stays around town, I'm just laying myself wide open to more killings. Can't you see that? Now, that's why he's got to go. No, I can't see it. It's not right, Roy, and it's not fair. Hold on, Joseph. The sheriff knows best. It's his job. I'll take care of it, Roy. The young man will leave in the morning. Thanks, Ben. So long, little Joe. Well, right is right, and this isn't. Now, Joseph, you're doing a lot of talking about right is right, and proof, and facts. Well, what facts do you have? What do you know about them? You worked a couple of ranches up in Oregon Territory? What else? But that isn't the main point. If he stays in Virginia City, he may be killed. Now, Roy is right. He knows best. Come on. Are you heading out? Yeah, I figured I'd have to move on sooner or later. Not quite this soon. I'm sorry to see you go. I put my time in here. Your father got his money's worth. Oh, I know that. Besides that, your father and the sheriff made it pretty clear that my welcome had run out. Yeah, I know. I still think they're wrong about that. I told him so last night. I mean, you stuck up for me? Argued against your father? Why not? What's right is right. Is that all? <laughs> no, it's not all. I, I don't know. We got along pretty good. Kind of thought we could be friends.
You remember that picture of your mother you showed me? Yeah. Can I see it again? What for? Just let me see it. See, this isn't just a picture of a beautiful woman. She's my mother, too. There's something I don't like about closed doors. Man's got a right to talk in private. Yeah, but when it's family, I don't like to be left outside. Well, how do you know it's about family? When a brother shows up from nowhere, it ain't family. Maybe. If I wants to talk to Clay alone. Of course, she told me she'd been married before. She also told me she'd had a child. But she said the baby had died. They lied. They lied to her and they lied to me. They lied. Who? My grandparents, my, my father's folks. They were against the marriage from the very beginning. They, they hated my mother. Didn't think she was good enough for their son. Well, when we all got the fever, my father died. They told my mother that, that I had died also. And See, when I was old enough to ask questions, they told me that she was dead. And after all this time, how did you find us? Well, last year I shook the wander dust off my heels and, and went back to New Orleans. Guess I got sentimental, wanted to put a flower or two on Mother's grave. Of course, that's when I found out there wasn't any grave. After that, I checked with the Hall of Records and around, and that's when I found out about, about you being married to my mother and about the Ponderosa. Clay, why didn't you tell us all this when you first got here? Well, I didn't want to push myself into a family. I don't know why I came here. I guess because I, I wanted to see my brother. Oh, and find out if I, if I liked you or not. No, none of this changes the fact that I better be moving on. Those, those miners are pretty hot under the collar. Oh, you, you'll be all right here in the Ponderosa. Are you sure, sir? Of course. They won't come out here. No, sir, that's not what I mean. What do you mean? I mean, do you believe me? Of course I do. Of course I believe you. The news is rather startling. You have to admit that. I, out of the blue, so to speak. It takes a little getting used to. Look, we, uh, we have plenty of room in here. Why don't you, uh, why don't you move in from the bunkhouse? Thank you, sir. Go sleep? Yeah, it's uh, kind of late. I guess I should have asked Hoss, Little Joan, Clay asleep. I suppose I'll be asking that from now on. Yeah, I guess you will. Well, he sure came out of the blue. Hmm? Well, he did kind of come out of nowhere. 
What are you driving at? <clears throat> well, I hope you don't mind, but uh, Horace and I were kind of talking it over, and we, uh... Well, don't you think you ought to check your story out? You and Horace think that I might have made up the whole thing? Well, we think it's important enough to know for sure. I mean, it uh, wouldn't do any harm to send a telegram to Judge Wharton down in New Orleans, would it? in town. Just rode in all the way from the ranch to ask you the same question. Your pa said that there were some supplies that needed picking up. You know you were the one that was going to pick them up? No difference doesn't make it. They needed picking up. Look, Pa told you we're safe on the ranch, but not here in town. Look, it's working hours. The miners are underground. Just half of them. They work on shifts. Now, let's get this wagon loaded and get out of here. Brother Joe, you worry too much. What you need is a beer to help you relax. Since we're in town, why don't we take care of that, huh? Hey, wait a minute and use your head. Now, the town is hot. The saloon's one place you're going to run into trouble. Maybe you won't have to look that far. Seems to be here right now. Maybe a couple of beers would cool us all off. Since Saturday, we're kind of particular about the company we keep. Take a horse thief, you can see the horse he steals. A fellow robs a bank, well, there's the money. But a card cheat. Well, if he's good at it, it's over and done with before you know what's happened. If Sam hadn't been drinking, nothing would have happened. There was no reason for it. Well, Sam ain't here to argue the point, but we are. And we aim to do more than just argue. Figure on using that gun? I never draw first. Just like to keep the street clean. You think one gun's enough? Two guns, gentlemen. Now, why don't you all just forget it? We don't want anybody to get hurt. Why don't you keep your nose out of this cart, right? Friend or no friend, he's gonna get his. He's not just a friend, he's my brother. All right. There'll be another day. You can use that beer now. Well, couldn't we just load the wagon and leave town? Maybe you're right, brother. Beans are on the fire, we'll have a drink. You better take it easy. We gotta be back to camp before light. Here's just the thing that'll help us take it easy. Here, drink up. You sure you got enough? <laughs> hey, this is whiskey. But not exactly. <coughs> well, what is it then? Polke. Polke, what's that? Well, it's a drink they have down in Mexico. They make it out of cactus. When you were loading up the wagon, I got it from Manuel back at the livery stable. Come on, drink up. It's hot, but it's good. Yeah, just like riding a nice, easy bronc. <laughs> but when he discovers that burr under his saddle, watch out. Yeah, don't worry about me. I can take it. <sighs> you know, this is better than a saloon. Yeah, you're right, and the company's better, too. Hey, how'd you happen to learn about this, uh... Pulque? Pulque, yeah. Well, when I was down in Mexico, it's the only kind of liquor they have down there, so you have to learn to like it. Now, what are you doing down there? Uh, fighting with Juarez. Fighting with Juarez, what, in his army? Yeah, I was down there for two years, a lieutenant. And how'd you happen to get mixed up in a thing like that? Well, the pay was good, and I happen to believe in what he was fighting for. Yeah, he was, he was fighting that, uh, that emperor, Maximilian, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I read a little bit about that somewhere. You know, Juarez was a, was a real Mexican, not a Spaniard. It was just like one of the thousands of peasants he led, a great man. Hmm. 
Hey, you know, it's kind of kind of sad he had to fail. Oh, he'll come back. And when he does, maybe, maybe I'll go back too. Hey, you know, we're getting much too serious. Come on, drink up, will you? <laughs> All right. I'll hey, look, I'll tell you about the girls that used to follow the army. <laughs> now, look, there was this one gal. Her name was Conchita. Oh, Conchita. So, you see, when we ran out, Conchita went right through the enemy lines and brought back a couple of jugs. <laughs> <laughs> brought back a couple of jugs. <laughs> hey, look. Now that's a, that is the kind of girl. That Conchita. That's the kind of girl that I would like to have. Hey, you know, <laughs> Conchita, she had a sister. Rosita. Hey, Rosita. Hey, listen now, in all, in all seriousness, we ought to get down there and get that Conchita and that Rosita. I'll drink to that. <laughs> viva Juarez. Viva! Viva! Viva la revolucion! Viva, viva! 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 Viva Pulque! Pulque! There's a lot of poke in there. Oh, that and Bonita. Ah, viva your Rosita. Viva my Rosita and Bonitas. Viva my brother! Hey, viva my brother! Viva! Viva, brother. We've got to get down there. And viva that Conchita and Bonita. Ah, viva. Morning, Joe. Morning. Morning. After a night of chewing the fat, nothing like a big breakfast to get you back in action. Hey, yeah, that's right. Speaking of fat, I'm gonna have me some more of that fat back. He really ain't nothing quite like some good old salt sow belly for breakfast, right, Joe? Ah, uh, well, no. Well, sorry, fellas, I'm wrong. No, I'm just, I'm raring to go this morning. <laughs> it's too bad we drank all that pulque. You'd like it. You know, now me, I personally prefer a great big glass of hot whiskey, about a hundred proof. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess we're just unlucky, huh? <laughs> well, morning, boys. Good morning. Time to get to work. Oh, morning, Joseph. Say, I've never seen you look better. Oh, I'm... Feeling real good, too. Oh, well, that's real fine, because we sure got a lot of work to do today. You, uh, boys had quite a chat last night. Yeah, I guess we overdid it. Well, I think he lived. <laughs> boys, I gotta ride back to the ranch. Keep things moving, huh? Right, Pop. That Clay sure is a likable fella, isn't he? Yeah, sure is. Yeah. You know, if me or you, either one, brought Joe home in the condition he was in last night, we wouldn't have heard the last of it till yet. Well, that's for sure. What do you mean a condition I'm in? I'm not in any kind of condition. I heard what Pa said was get started. <laughs> Gee, I'm, I'm sorry, fella. <laughs> to see us. Yeah, I got the telegraph back from New Orleans. What did it say? Story checks out. What's the matter, then? Well, Alvin Wharton is a very good lawyer. When he investigates, he gets all the facts. Marie was his mother. He was born in New Orleans, raised by his grandparents. It's all true. What's the trouble, Paul? Something that Alvin found out that happened two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah, in a little town in Texas. Chico Wells. Seems there was a card game. Clay was winning a lot of money. 
Matt accused him of cheating. Reached for his gun. Clay killed him. Yeah. That's sort of stretching the long arm of coincidence, ain't it? I'm afraid that's how a lot of people will look at it. How do you look at it? What are you going to tell little Joe? Well, he's going to have to face the fact that there can be weaknesses in people, even in those you care about. You going to let Clay stay around? I uh, guess we'll have to give him the benefit of whatever doubts we have about him. I don't understand. What is he guilty of? Joseph, I'm not accusing him of anything. But we both know how he's lived. All right, he's led a different life. He's been alone. But it doesn't change the fact that he's my brother and he's still part of this family. Well, of course he is. I'm not disputing that. But he must realize, and you must help him realize, that well, things are different here. Tragedies like, like the other night with the miner. You keep saying that. Now, it was not his fault, and the only reason you'd have for saying that is because you think he was cheating. The only person who can answer that is Clay himself. All right, I'll talk to him. I think it might be better if I talked with him. Now, please let me talk to him, Bob. Please let me be the one. Clay, you know, I've been thinking. Now, the roundup's gonna be over in a couple of days, and I, I thought you and I could take a trip somewhere. Huh? Well, you know, Viva Juarez. Kinda like to go down to Mexico, see how the revolution's coming along. You know, it's not all just fun down there, Joe. As I told you the other night, a revolution's a pretty serious thing. I remember. I remember most of it. Look, if it's not Mexico, it'll be some other place. I don't care. I just want to take a trip and have some fun. We're brothers, aren't we? Now, the roundup's over, we'll collect our pay and take off. Okay, when the roundup's over, we'll figure out where we'll go. Good enough. of these strays rounded up by tomorrow. You're so busy, I haven't had much chance to talk. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, uh, just Joe talked to. Oh, you mean about going to Mexico? What's this about Mexico? Well, the other night we talked about the two years I spent with Juarez in Mexico. He thought now, after the roundup, it might be fun to go down there. I see. That's all I talked to you about? Yes, sir. Well, what was he supposed to talk about, sir? Now, Clay, we, we understand what a rough time you've had these past 10 or 12 years, making your way alone. And uh, understand that your way of life is different from ours as a result. It's your values are different. The past is past. You're part of the family now, and we'd like you to stay part of the family. Hope that our way of life, our values, will be yours from now on. Well, sir, I, I don't know. You don't know what? I mean, I appreciate what you've said. And you're very generous, but I've got to be honest with you. I'm not sure that this is my kind of life. Well, are you sure it isn't your kind of life? No, sir. Would you try it? Yes, sir. Good. Let's forget these romantic notions about Mexico. <laughs> well, that was Joe's idea. Well, he was influenced by you. Try to use your influence the right way. Yes, sir, I'll try. See the house.
Thanks again, Mr. Walsh. Healthy bonus for all hands this year. That sure is. It's one roundup that ended up better than it started. <laughs> Be careful of that money, Joe. I will, sir. Thank you. Hold it, Conrad. Go in the alley. Come on, move. All right. Where is he? Where's who? That new brother of yours. We've been waiting for him. What's the matter? Is he scared to come to town? Nobody's scared. Look, we just don't want any trouble, that's all. Well, it ain't always easy to avoid trouble. Guess we'll have to give you a message for that brother. Go on, take him, boys. Get him in the house. Easy, easy. How is he, sir? He's pretty badly beaten up, but he'll be all right. Well, did he tell you how it happened? Yes. Apparently, the miner is meant it as a message to you. I figured that's what it was. I'm sorry, sir. I should have taken off before now. I'll, I'll pack my things tonight. No, Clay, that's no answer. As I told you, you're family now. We'll handle it together. No, sir, that's not what I mean. You see, trouble's been following me all my life. No matter what I do, no matter where I go. And now it's, it's followed me here. Well, running is not going to solve that problem. We'll... We'll handle it, somehow. I'll get some broth that I've been heating up. everybody. No. Oh, Hoss and Adam are paying off the man and they'll be back soon. Clay's downstairs. Does he know about the miners? Yeah, he knows. Well, I sure hope he doesn't blame himself. You stop worrying about what other people are thinking. You drink that broth. Hey, tell Clay I want to see him. Best thing for you to do right now, young man, is rest. I'll rest as soon as I see Clay. You drink up that broth. And I'll get him. Thanks. Thank you. 
Now, where's Clay? Joe Clay's left. I checked his room. His things are gone. He's gone? Tell me what you said to him, Pa. I didn't say anything to him, Joe. I didn't even see him. I'd already asked him to stay, be part of the family. Son, he's old enough to make his own decisions. And the important thing for you right now is to rest. Take care of yourself. Why don't you leave without me? You better get off that horse before you fall off. Come on over here and sit down. Hey, no thanks. I just didn't stand up. I think I feel better. Sorry I don't have any pulky, but here. Viva coffee. The last thing I need any more of that pulky. Thanks. Why'd you leave without me? Just like I told your pa, trouble's been following me all my life. I mean, look what happened to you just on account of me. That's no reason I've been in fights before. Yeah, but this time you were lucky. It was their fists. Next time it could be their guns. Oh, Clay, we're brothers. Your fight is my fight. This thing with the miners, we can settle together. Look, you have family now. Don't leave. It won't work, Joe. Clay, we're brothers. We can make it work. Look, let me explain something to you. Just because we're brothers doesn't mean we have to think alike, be alike, do alike. Yes, it happens with some brothers, like you and Adam and Hoss. Why can't it work with you and me? Because it just won't. Look, you lived all your life on the Ponderosa, and you like it. But you see, I couldn't. It would be like being in a cage. All right, then I won't ask you to stay at the Ponderosa now. We'll travel around together. You feel you're ready to settle down. You could down. no more live my life than I could live yours. Well, how do you know? I've never tried it. Look, you saw what happened to that miner. It's happened before, and it can happen again. Maybe things like that won't happen, Clay, if we're together. No, it couldn't. Look, look, you just get in my way. Clay, you don't mean that. You know it. Look, will you get it through your head that I don't want you along? I don't need your family, and I don't need you. Now, will you go home, Joe, where you belong? <laughs> Bring it back someday.
Hadi, all right, son. 